Prospective medical students tend to be very hungry for knowledge and I think this leads to them often reading voraciously about being a doctor and the ups and downs of that career path. And I think this is really good because obviously while there's no uh, kind of substitute for getting hands-on direct experience if you can, be it through volunteering or shadowing, there are plenty of really accessible books on that subject penned by authors who are obviously themselves doctors. And in this video, I'm going to be recommending you five books you should read if you're thinking about going to medical school. There are, of course, many, many more that I couldn't put on this list for the sake of space, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments if I've not mentioned one of your favourites, or even if you've read one of the ones on this list, I'd love to know what you thought. So let's start with a big one for me, Do No Harm, by eminent neurosurgeon Mr. Henry Marsh captures the emotional and personal side of his career as a neurosurgeon. And the structure of the book is quite simple. It focuses on a number of different case studies from throughout his life, the challenges that Henry faced when he was dealing with them, and the lessons he learned when overcoming them, with a particular focus on his personal mistakes. And really interestingly, not that much of this story is actually about neurosurgery. So often it's about the times he chooses not to operate and the the types of choices he has to make. There's a saying, um, I think you hear bandied around a lot, that many neurosurgeons sort of think and behave as if they're gods. And this, I think, can be attributed quite well to the message that comes across in this book. When those surgeons have to deal with those situations where making that decision to not operate might give them a little bit longer, whereas operating might kill them instantly, or it might make them better. Everything hangs in the balance. And as well, it looks at the ability to deal with patients um, who are called wrecked, that is to say, lose all their sort of semblance of self after being operated on. So that's Do No Harm. His second book, Admissions, is also really well worth the read. But if you're looking at applying to medical school, this is the one I'd really recommend you start with. Now the second and most recent release on this list is actually This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay and it's so good that I gave away a signed copy right here on this channel some time ago. And I keep buying copies of it and then lending it to people and never getting it back, which is why I don't have a copy for this video. Essentially This Is Going To Hurt is adapted from a series of diaries that Adam made while a junior doctor working in the NHS. And if that name sounds familiar to you, it's because Adam is one half of medical musical duo the Amateur Transplants, famous for such hits as Paracetamoxifrusibendroneomycin and London Underground, among others. And the book, intentionally or not, is a startling expose of the working conditions felt by junior doctors all across the UK. And Adam writes the book in his sort of trademark, dark comedic style, injecting humour into the gory and often fluid-soaked experiences he works through while training to be an obs and gynae specialist. It's a really, really good look into the true life of a junior doctor and illustrates that very few, if any, are doing it for the money. Thank you very much, Jeremy Hunt. Now, as for book number three on this list, it's quite different to the other ones, but The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat by Oliver Sacks is probably one of the most widely read neuroscience books of all time. This book is an intriguing tour through some of the strange and wonderful conditions that can affect the human brain, arguably the most mysterious organ in the human body. And I think this is actually best read by people who have had no previous introduction to neuroscience at all, because of the level that you could be surprised as you go through the book. And a really, really common theme um, among the case studies that are presented in this book is that the author, Oliver Sacks, is an incredibly talented writer, and on first pass of each chapter, it reads as very, very funny. His writing style is hilarious, but then when you actually look at it in more detail, you realise quite how tragic some of the situations are. In short, it's a fantastic introduction to the world of neurology written by a very, very talented author. There's a very good preamble for accessibility, and that makes it a fantastic read for those medical and non-medical alike. Another book by a surgeon, Fragile Lives by Professor Stephen Westerby captures some of the more startling events that happened during his career as a heart surgeon. Starting in his days as a medical student, how he discovered his love for the heart and cardiac surgery. This book again is presented through a series of case studies, some of which are very tragic and some are those, those ones where everything is in the balance, hung between life and death, and only for the sake of a very, very rapid and clever intervention is the problem solved. And I think this one, and the reason why it's kind of on this list, is that I think it's really helpful to compare to Do No Harm by Henry Marsh, because both Stephen Westerby and Henry Marsh are 
are from that crew of really old school surgeons, the ones that trained and spent every waking hour in the hospital refining their craft. But despite this, they come across in very, very different ways. Stephen Westerby, at least the way he's presented in the book, seems to have a very calm and lucid demeanour. Whereas Henry Marsh, if you know anything about him, has a reputation for having quite a confrontational personality and a, a fiery temper. But the thing is, is that both are obviously at the very, very peak and pinnacle of the craft that they perform. And that's why I really recommend reading both Do No Harm and Fragile Lives, because you can compare and contrast the two as you go through and see similar crafts taken from very, very different places. And finally, how could this one not be on the list? Rachel Clark's Your Life in My Hands is probably the most heartbreaking but honest look at the NHS as a complete institution grinding and creaking slowly forwards and sustained essentially only by the goodwill of the people that work within it. Rachel herself actually retrained as a doctor. She worked as a journalist previously, and I think you can really tell that based on the way the book is written. It's again broken down into a series of smaller stories, but there's a really good sense of a larger narrative unfolding throughout the entire book as it reaches its climax. From anecdotes from her adventures and misadventures as a junior doctor to directly clashing with the government over the changes that were made recently to the way the NHS works, Rachel's book offers just incredibly personal insights into both the world that she works in, but her own world when it comes to her own family. And I think Rachel's book, of all the ones on this list, probably offers the widest appeal to any student wanting to go into healthcare, not just medicine, it could be nursing, physio, paramedic, whatever. But this book offers such a startlingly accurate and realistic view of the NHS and it's the daily life of the people that work within it. And things will have changed inevitably since this book was written, but I feel like this will go a long way towards people on the inside actually bringing about the changes that still need to happen. So that's it guys, five books I think you should read before applying to medical school. This is a really big one for me, please let me know down in the comments which books you'd recommend to anyone applying or books that inspired you to go on and study medicine, or books that you're reading now while you're a healthcare student. There are so many, and I'm looking forward to coming across ones that I've never heard before, so please do leave your recommendations down below. So thank you all for watching. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to go and check out postgradmedic.com for more free videos like this and my daily med school blog here at Warwick Medical School. You can also find me on social media. All the links for that are down in the description below. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye bye guys.